Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was uh, we were talking about uh, uh, Benedeschi and, and Insigne. They finally got their uh, mm -hmm. their first minute. Benedeschi, I believe, started. Insigne came and scored into the game. Benedeschi scored about a, a great goal. Uh, Insigne got the assist. If you didn't see that goal that uh, Michael Bradley scored, mm. looking looking like uh, he's 19 years old Yo, again. Oh seven, oh eight, Michael Bradley. <laughs> Michael Bradley. Michael Bradley's hair grew back in that yeah. goal, dog. Oh, bro, he put, <laughs> ran his hair, hands through his hair. That was just a beautiful play. Yo, he Chievo did. Verona jersey. <laughs> he, uh, oh yeah, it was a, a great like flick from uh, yeah. from Intigne and then, but Bradley not only did he when he received the ball, he went between two defenders, but he like faked the shot. He did the move. This happens in FIFA when you hit the shoot then pass. Yeah, yeah. And you you, you like, like chopped you away from the ball and then yeah, cut back. But he like yeah. he 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 hit. He did like a hip thing yeah. where it made it look like he was about to shoot and they completely fooled the Charlotte Shakira defender. Shakira's wrong, yo. Hips do lie, bro. <laughs> and and then he chips the, the goalkeeper yeah. as well. I'm like, yo, is this the number nine for Toronto FC? Damn. Was it unbelievable? I, look, I just this did. is what Michael Bradley been missing is better players around him. Yo, Josie was holding him down. <laughs> Michael bro. Bradley, you're supposed to be behind the center circle, pinging yeah. balls. What are you doing up here, uh, Regista? Get out my <laughs> zone, dude. No, but uh, but incredible. Uh, you know, uh, Toronto uh, wins the game four nil, and and we were talking last week. We were like, how? I asked the question, how long does Bob Bradley have if if, if Toronto don't turn things around? Because Toronto looks like they're gonna miss the playoffs mm -hmm. if they don't get a bunch of wins real soon. And and look at how that first game goes. I mean, the the you know is did it did the Italian like um, signings start with um, Jovinko. Uh, Jovinko? Was that the beginning of the, that win Toronto? He's probably not the first player to come from the Italian league, but he's the first player quote unquote in their prime. Because this this has to be the the move going forward. But Toronto also has a massive Italian population. I, uh, that's why that's why I'm saying Toronto should be the chief. Us of you know Italian of like MLS. national team Ita rejects <laughs> bro not even rejects but just like be an all Italian team lean into it bro oh solo mio Toronto <laughs> FC let's go why not because it seems to be working quite well uh but Toronto's having a uh for all my homies in Toronto, uh, man's having a Mazda. Uh, they're not doing well bro no they're not yeah they're, um they're 22 they're on what? Twenty two points. Twenty two points. I mean, look, they're six away from a from a playoff spot, right? And currently, five, six, and seven are Orlando, Columbus, and Cincinnati, which anything can happen, right? You know, look, Cincinnati could go back to being Cincinnati, but also, you know, Charlotte, Chicago on the come up. Chicago getting as far away from that uh, wooden spoon as possible. <laughs> um, the the so it, it looks like if Atlanta struggling, bro, you I, forget. I don't know how much uh, you know. I don't know how many times we're gonna see this Michael Bradley, mm -hmm. but this uh, I, I think. Look, like I, I asked last week, how many games do you give Bob Bradley with? A full roster. You got to have the whole season because they keep adding players. So you got to give him a chance. Okay. Uh, and also, you wouldn't add those players and keep him in that position if you didn't have confidence that that player plus that coach would be able to make that adjustment. Right. And and, and it looks like as far as uh, you know, all signs are pointing to that uh, players like uh, Bernadeschi and Insigne are in incredibly happy uh, to be there. I had posted. Uh, There's also another one. We keep forgetting this dude's name. Who's the other Italian on the team? Oh, I don't know. What's his um, name? I mean, I'm highlighting the the ones that just got there. He, but he also d did just come, but not not in this window. He came earlier in the season, but I keep forgetting his name. Okay. But go ahead, I'll find it. So the um, the oh, I forgot what the point I was going to make. Um, I said, how much time uh, is Bob Bradley? How, does he have and? lost it i don't know oh it seems like oh uh, that they uh, are happy to be there and i had uh, 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 pointed out domenico crisito 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 uh, is he from italy yeah, he came from the italian league oh, okay okay um the oh no Cur came from zenit st petersburg got it okay yeah. so the uh, I had posted the the the, uh, the clip last week of us talking about Benedeschi uh, arriving in MLS, mm. and I had it was well received. No one was disrespectful. <laughs> Is that what you're about to tell? No, me? they they basically interpreted it, it as like, oh, he he's he basically he's not a good player, and uh, you know, 
and you know he, he was basically a joke in Italy and that that he shouldn't necessarily be praised as uh, as a sign as like a good players are coming to uh, to MLS and it's like there is no real uh, like people always try to like poo poo any anything that could make the MLS look good, especially from the league that they came from. The people, fans right. of that league will be like, oh, he's went there. It's because he is... By virtue of going to MLS. Right. He, uh, we never wanted him anyway. And then he scores his great goal. It yeah. looks like he's fit in perfectly. Same well. thing with Javinko. Javinko wasn't getting uh, minutes in, at Juventus at the rate that he was earlier in his career. Yeah. So he decides to go to MLS, which is typical. No one's like... You know, winning Golden Boot in Serie A and going, I think I'm going to go to MLS next season. <laughs> you know what I mean? Usually it comes from someone who's like, yo, I'm better than how I'm being perceived here. Yeah. I need to move on. And by virtue of them playing well here, people are like, well, he was a backup here, so MLS must not be good. It's never it's never enough. There's never, like, you, you're not allowed to have a retribution story. Right. And and I think we can get to a point where, like, I think what, what little by little, what's, what's starting to happen, and you see it more across social media, is the... There's there's people caring less about the opinions of the Europeans, Europeans. Uh, European fans. Yeah, and and it's getting to a point where the the longer they complain or make these like negative comments, the right. more ridiculous it's going to start sounding. Because we've I think we're already there. In fact, one of the things that I think. I really took away from the whole Baltimore and Orlando trip, especially in Orlando where I got to, you know, talk to a lot more of the AFTV people because they weren't in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, nah, man, I wish they were all like, nah, I'm not kidding. All of them at one point said something that, you know, paraphrased or related to the I wish English fans were more like this. You know, Arsenal fans here are so united. They're so positive about the team. They have such a big outlook on the team. They're really hopeful for the next season. They're not. They're not carrying that additional weight. They're not carrying that additional hate sometimes, or yeah. that that sort of cynicism that comes with being a, a Premier League fan in England. We don't have that here because you know we're just happy to see the team. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a preseason match. And I think. I think that's happening in general. I think you're seeing that some of these European fans, especially the ones that are the most active on, in the comments, are just there. And nothing's good enough for them. <laughs> they're leaving a negative comment in our, in our things. They're leaving negative comments in their own club's posts. <laughs> yeah, you know? It's just a, a general like uh, toxic behavior. But there's, a, there's another dude on TikTok that I highly recommend people follow. His name is, uh, I don't know his actual name, but his handle is uh, Noble, Noble Noblet Strength or Noble T Strength. I'm not exactly sure how to say it. Um, but he's uh, he's a dude. He he, I, he uh, he's like a I think he's a trainer, like a like a soccer trainer and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, but he does he answers questions and, and talks ab uh, about uh, American soccer uh, while he's like juggling a ball uh, on the on the ground. That's he's, impressive. He's a very very good juggler. But he and he has like he has very nuanced conversation while he's juggling a ball, and it's very impressive. And a lot of uh, and uh, you know I always you know TikTok can be like annoying and toxic and stuff like that. But the one thing I appreciate about it is that. I, it definitely for us, it's exposed us to uh, to European fans. There's, yeah, you know, you, you know, football, TikTok, and soccer. It's they just TikTok is just like, oh, you like soccer? All right, you're gonna be you, check out these, these Dominican and Cuban dude. Like, yeah, you yeah. <laughs> Wait, did you click on a uh, you know the kickoff clip? <laughs> well, now here's two dummies from New York. <laughs> so, Let's see how you feel about that back to back. So there, it, there's a there's a an interesting cultural exchange of like that's a great way to put it. Uh, <laughs> of, well, look at all these cultural exchanges that we've had to you know ban from our account but there is it's an interesting uh, and, and this happens with a lot of people that uh, are american and talk about soccer is that there's you now now you're debating with europeans about about mls about champions league and there's just like especially watching that that, that dude uh no blood strength you uh, I, I like a lot of his points just about how we're kind of just growing our own thing and it, it it's it's what what what's sort of happening and what what the trends are kind of suggesting is that in 20 30 years european leagues are going to look more like mls than mls looking like european yeah, leagues now i could totally see that so uh look so look it's it's only a matter of time okay before you start a a hating the sport uh that and, and americans ruined it yeah. get ready for it by the way gamer says 
I leave negative comments and I love MLS. I know you do it <laughs> on our channel and our chat and you're still watching, dude. Okay, the I Euro- love it. The Europeans don't do that. They definitely <laughs> yeah. don't like MLS and they also don't they leave. They kind of miss comments. on that second part. You seem to be pretty good okay, at it. Because it's coming from a place of love when uh, when you do it. 